I'm really excited to be the new New Hampshire Poet Laureate. And I, um, I see my position for, for these five years as being a kind of ambassador for poetry. So my main goals are to bring more poetry to more people from both sides, to think about both sides, to think about the poets, of whom there are many in our state, and get their work and their uh, readings, workshops, get them into the community. And from the other side, get more people um, reading poetry and interested in it. So I'd like to match readers and writers. And I also would love to collaborate with some of the organizations that already exist in the state. There are a lot of organizations in New Hampshire supporting the arts. So I would love to see how we can collaborate and come up with ways to get more poetry throughout the state and beyond. Uh, I never said to myself that I want to, I want to grow up to be a writer, I want to be a writer. It was more just that I wrote. I always wrote, even when I was a little kid. And so when it came time for me to choose what was I really going to focus on, I think I went more into writing because I was shy and it was easier to do that on my own. Even though I loved the arts and I always wrote um, and made other things, painted, drew, danced, played music. Um, when I went to college, I thought that I needed to have a serious major or something, you know, that I could use as a career. So I was a um, I was majoring in sociology and interested in juvenile criminology, but I kept taking so many art and literature courses that really in the end I had a double major in art and literature and gave up on the whole idea of being a sociologist of any sort. Um, but then after college I was living in New York City working at um, bookstores and um, sort of fell into doing theatrical costuming. When I was ready to leave New York City, I was looking into grad schools. I had taken some poetry workshops, meanwhile, with Galway Cannell and Sharon Olds, and um, I got a job running the costume shop at Theatre by the Sea in Portsmouth. Also, after being in Portsmouth for a while, began the graduate program with Charlie Simic and McKeel McBride at UNH. After graduate school, I continued to work at UNH for a while, teaching writing courses, and, um, and then I decided to just go into my own business. So um, I do custom sewing work for, for people, um, but my specialty is refashioning, which is basically cutting up old unwanted clothes and turning them into new interesting items. Um, it's collaging, which is very much what I can, what I sometimes do in my writing, where I take phrases or images from many different places and then um, try to weave them together into something coherent. The reason I wrote Strange Terrain was that um, I've done all these reading programs with people through the Humanities Council and. Um, people come together and they love to read and they love to talk about what they read. But when a poem shows up, um, they, they freeze often. So I wanted to come up with a program that would simply say, here's a few ways to enter a poem, some ways that are really basic. And um, so I came up with this eight-step program. And I began doing that program, Entering the Realm of Poetry for the Humanities Council. And then um, someone wanted to reprint my first two poetry books who, that were out of print, but she wanted them to be presented more with, a, with me speaking about the poems the way that I would at a reading, where I would say something about where a poem came from and, and then read it. And so I began to write about some of my poems and realized that really what I wanted to do was to create a book that would help people feel more comfortable with poetry using some of my older poems. That way I could talk about them from the inside, not as someone instructing you how to read Yeats or how to read Dickinson, um, but saying, here's what I was doing, here's the effect I wanted, here's what I was thinking when I did this. I don't necessarily think that poetry has to be accessible. I don't believe that 
difficult or challenging poetry is a problem. There are many different kinds of poetry and different readers who want different challenges. Some readers want a poem that they understand right away and that, that touches them right away. Other readers, like me, want to read things that I have to participate in making the meaning. It's almost like um, archaeological levels of what you can get from a poem. So you can read a poem and simply um, take in the content. Maybe it has, it speaks to you about an experience or a feeling. But we can go to the next level, which is what were the actual elements that the poet put there to have those effects? Um, what kind of language was used? What about the shape on the page? The way that the lines break and how that slows down our understanding or brings multiple understandings. Um, word choices that have connotations. What images do we see? And so we can keep on digging down and down and down through those layers. The book also addresses teachers who are trying to teach poetry, but who um, themselves might not know if they're on the right track. So it does have um, a section at the end that gives teachers some ideas. Um, it also works as a guide in, even in a writing workshop, because each of those chapters is really a section that you could spend a week talking about um, what goes into poems. Um, right now I'm using it in a creative writing workshop at Keene State. And so each week we read about one element, one chapter, and look. the students look for poems that demonstrate what goes on in them, and then write a poem that really focuses on that particular element. And then finally, the last audience for it is um, the loved ones of poets. So if you're a poet and your family says, I just don't get this stuff, or your friends say, you know, that's nice, but I can't give you feedback on that, then you can give that book to, to that family or family member or that friend and, and say, here, read this, and now we can talk about my poems. When I wrote Strange Terrain, I wanted to set it up from perhaps the simplest steps to the more complex ones, starting with the shape on the page. Why is it shaped the way it is? Does it have even stanzas, or is it all over the page? Next comes words. How does a poet use words differently from the words we read in a newspaper or even in fiction? I think a lot of people get confused about poetry because they think that the words are going to be explicit in, in the same sense that they would be for a recipe or a newspaper article. And they're not necessarily. The language in a poem may be um, full of double meanings, or it may be placed on the page in a way that brings up new meanings. The next sections are image, emotions, and thought. How a poem brings us to see things, brings us to our own feelings, brings us to understand the emotions of humanity, and also makes us think about ideas, makes us think about situations, predicaments, what it means to be a human. Then the next step is, um, I talk about the conventions of prose, that when we come as readers to a piece of writing, there are conventions that we automatically look for, that we, that we know without necessarily being conscious of them. And the final step in the book, which is the hardest and yet the most important, is called unknowing, the unknowing. And what that is about is really, no matter how much we understand about all the elements that go into making a poem, we're still going to experience a sense of mystery when we read most poems. And what I really want to get across is that that's a good thing, that um, it's something to be grateful for, that, that we can read poems and understand so much about their language and experience so much through the images and the shapes on the page and the thoughts and feelings, and yet still feel some sense of mystery. And that's not the fault of the poem or of the reader. That's simply the state of being here on the planet, that many things in life um, are mysterious. So I, for one, am, am grateful to have the opportunity to be able to sit and feel that 
sense of mystery. So, in, so the whole point of the book is there's, there, it's sort of twofold. There is the demystification in which I show you here some really simple ways for you to enter a poem, um, many of which really you already have available to you. And then the part which is um, to accept that you won't always understand, you won't get a poem all the time, and that's fine. It's not, that's not what we're reading poems for.